Welcome to our Coastal and Viruscape model. This colorful model is a teaching tool. We will learn about watersheds, water pollution, and how to prevent it. Ready? Let's go! Wow, look at that gorgeous green lawn. Why is it so green? Fertilizer is a mixture of three plus plant nutrients. People use too much fertilizer or the wrong amount. Why? Many people don't read and follow directions or think more is better. People use fertilizer right before it rains or at the wrong time. Why? Many people think the percolation rate will increase or they don't know better or fail to monitor weather forecasts. Fertilizer is picked up or suspended by storm runoff. It enters waterways, feeds algae that blooms, algae blooms and dies, algae blooms and decomposes. Oxygen depilation equals dead fish. By overfeeding our land plants, we are overfeeding our water plants and thus suffocating fish and aquatic life. Solutions. Keep fertilizer out of our waterways in the first place. Use no fertilizer. Use less fertilizer. Look, no pesky pests in our yard. Why is it pest-free? Pesticides. We use these chemicals to kill unwanted plants, weeds, and other insects. Chemical residue is suspended by stormwater runoff. These chemicals are picked up by stormwater runoff, enter, and chemically contaminate waterways, and or they soak into soil and contaminate groundwater. Persistent chemicals enter the food chain. They're stored in animal fat and cause physical, neurological, and behavioral problems. Solutions. Keep your yard chemicals out of our waterways in the first place. Refrain from using chemicals or weed and feed fertilizers. Provide a friendly wildlife habitat and encourage beneficial insects and insect-eating birds and bats. Use vinegar and or boiling water to kill weeds. Hand weed or use cardboard and newspapers to snuff out weeds. Use water to get rid of yellow jackets instead of gasoline. Use less chemicals. Use less toxic alternatives and read the directions. Check the weather forecast for rain. Adopt integrated pest management. Plant native plants to buffer the waterways or to filter chemical runoff. <coughs> we all love our family pets, but how do we properly dispose of pet waste? Animal waste contains bacteria. High levels of bacteria can infect shellfish, making them inedible. Bacteria can also harm other aquatic organisms. Bacteria also poses a human health threat at beach areas so that swimming may be restricted or even banned. County residents have various types of pets. Dogs, cats, horses, goats, pot pigs, chickens, or even more. Pet waste contains nutrients and pathogens. Pet waste disposed outdoors is suspended by stormwater runoff, leading to nutrients and pathogens entering and contaminating surface waterways and percolating into the earth leading to contaminated groundwater. Solutions. Keep your pet waste out of our waterways in the first place. Clean up after your dog on a walk and in your yard. Carefully wrap waste in plastic and dispose properly in a solid waste receptacle. Plant native plants to buffer along waterways and filter out animal waste. Add best management practices. Many household cleaners contain toxic chemicals. Cleaners have directions on the label. Follow them. Toxic chemicals, paints, and solvents can be harmful to plants, wild animals, pets, and people. Problems arise with improper storage, leaks and spills, improper disposal in sink drains, storm drains, and when chemicals are poured directly into soil. Solutions. Keep household chemicals out of our waterways in the first place. Refrain from using toxic chemicals. Replace with environmentally friendly cleaners. Use less chemical cleaners. Read labels and avoid cleaners with skull and crossbones. Dispose of unused chemicals, such as paints and solvents, properly at household hazardous waste collection sites, such as the county's Tillman Ridge or Stratton Road Transfer Station, or during a hazardous waste roundup event. Never dump anything, especially chemicals, down a storm drain. Ladies and gentlemen, start your gas-powered engines. Each race leaves a trace. Do cars leak? Yes. How do you know? You may see a dark stain underneath the car. What comes out of a tailpipe? 
Yes, the air pollution lands on the ground and enters the watershed by rainfall or suspended in the atmosphere and returned to the earth during rainfall. Vehicles that burn fossil fuels release byproducts such as oxidative nitrogen, sulfur, carbon, and volatile organic carbons. These emissions are released through the tailpipe. These polluting gases in the air rain back to the earth and enter streams, lakes, rivers, wetlands, and oceans. People use toxic chemicals and solvents to clean and maintain their cars, boats, professional watercrafts, and more. These cleaners and chemicals either leak from the ditches, which empty untreated into the waterways, or the cleaners and chemicals are dumped directly into storm drains and ditches. These chemicals are poured into the soil and they contaminate the groundwater. Fact, one quart of motor oil poured down a storm drain contaminates 250,000 gallons of clean water. Solutions. Keep your vehicle emissions and air pollutants out of our waterways in the first place. Some options are to use energy efficient gas electric hybrids. Drive your own vehicle less by carpooling, walking, bike riding, or taking mass transit. Maintain your vehicles on your own with less toxic fluids cleaners, and solvents. Recycle your used motor oil at businesses that offer this service. Properly dispose of other automotive fluids at hazardous waste collection sites. Wash your vehicle on grass or vegetation instead of a paved surface. Use less toxic soaps and waxes. Visit a car wash that recycles or treats it wash with water responsibly. Bulldozer, bulldozer, push the soil right on over. Land clearing. Large amounts of soil are distributed when land is cleared to build new homes, schools, roads, and shopping centers. Bare soil is unprotected soil. Strong rains and the resulting stormwater runoff erodes soil and transports it off of the construction site, depositing it in waterways as sediment. The following are major adverse effects of sedimentation. Deposits in lakes and rivers, compromising capacity for stormwater detention, leading to flooding. Sediment carries contaminants. Sediment smothers fish eggs, preventing their hatching. Sediment smothers benthic invertebrates and other aquatic insects that fish eat and alters the entire aquatic food chain. Sediment causes water to turn dark and turbid, absorbing heat energy and raising water temperatures. This can reduce oxygen in the water which fish need in their food to survive. Fact. Sediment is St. Johns County's number one water pollutant by volume. Keep sediment and air pollutants out of our waterways in the first place. By law in St. Johns County, all sediment must be contained on a construction site of over one acre and kept out of our waterways. Penalties and fines are levied for non-compliance. Add buffers, sedimentation basins, and slit fences. Fertilizers and pesticides are used to make the course nice and green and playable. People enjoy playing golf on neat green golf courses. Fertilizer and chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides are used for golf course maintenance. Stormwater picks up and delivers untreated chemicals and fertilizer to waterways. Keep fertilizers and chemicals out of our waterways in the first place. Use chemicals only as needed and follow packaging directions for use. People buy many products as consumers. Industries and manufacturing plants manufacture raw input into output. The manufacturing process can produce byproduct such as liquid effluent that is treated or not treated and piped directly back into our waterways or gaseous effluent which is treated or not treated and released into the atmosphere through smokestacks. Sometimes, the liquid effluent is released at a high temperature, which is considered thermal pollution. As permitted, point sources, industries and manufacturing plants must not exceed a set threshold for specific pollutants. Fines for noncompliance are levied. Keep liquid effluent and gaseous effluent out of our waterways in the first place. Innovate and reuse effluent as other industrial input. Treat and clean with new technologies before releasing into the environment. Farm grow crops, and raise cattle. Farming can involve the use of fertilizers and chemicals. Farming involves the management of soil, water, plants, and animal wastes. Keep sediment, fertilizers, chemicals, and animal waste out of our waterways in the first place. Reduce erosion. 
adopt conservation measures through soil and water conservation districts and state and federal programs. Use other agricultural BMPs that reduce the impact of rainfall, increase water infiltration, and slow surface runoff. Check with USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service for a guide to implement vegetative buffer zones. Use less fertilizer and chemicals. Use precision farming, where GPS identifies exact amounts of fertilizer needed in the exact field location for specific crop and environmental conditions. Adopt conservation tillage that builds up organic matter and soil health. Maintain or plant buffers along waterways to filter any fertilizers and chemicals from farm runoff. Prevent introduction of animal wastes. Fence livestock out of streams and provide watering troughs away from waterways. Direct all waste into a lagoon or holding pond and treat biologically. Compost manure and dead animals and collect runoff in lagoons and holding ponds. Research new animal waste management strategies and reduce odor and waste pollution. Patronize and support local farmers that employ responsible environmental stewardship through their farming operations. Hopefully, you have learned many responsible actions that you can take to protect your watershed. Which ones are easy enough to start doing today? Which actions will you tell your friends about? What's the best way to encourage others to protect water quality? Show them by modeling water stewardship practices yourself. Don't pollute. Our waterways are a direct reflection on how much we care.